Welcome back to the second video of the post-production workflow series that we're doing here on the channel. Now, this is the culling video. If you haven't watched the importing video, I highly recommend that you go watch that and then return to this video because there's some things that you have to do there that make it make sense for culling. But if you're not familiar with culling, that just means selecting your images that you want to edit. Now, if you remember from our import video, this is where we left off with all of our files, with the file name, the event name, and then I have my raw version, which is a .cr3, and then I have my JPEG version. In order for me to get to where I like to cull, I need to go to file and then group raw plus JPEG. Remember that file name is extremely important because this is how on one is figuring out uh, what needs to be like versus what needs to be different since the file name is the exact same and it's just the dot cr3 and dot jpeg that ends it's going to tell on one that i need to stack these two together so when i click it you'll see i went from 472 to 236 total images in the folder and i get this little icon over my images this little icon tells me that I have photos in a stack, which means it's a raw and a JPEG. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how to flip it to look at the JPEG first and then the raw second. Uh, I think it just defaults to the raw, but that's okay. Now, I'm gonna unselect these ones because we don't need those to be selected. So now it's time to actually cull through the images. My recommendation is you close down the left pane. You can leave the right pane open so we can look at some of the uh, metadata. But next thing is to come to the film strip view. Now, again, all we're doing here is our first pass to see if we like the image. If we do, we push P. If we don't, we don't do anything. All right. And when you push P, you'll get a little heart over the image. That lets you know that you selected the image and you said that you like it. So I like the first look here's the second look and these are very similar so i'm gonna go with this one because he's closer and fill in the frame a little bit better and i like this one as well and you can see you can really just move through these so this one is actually better but i'm not going to worry about taking off the other one and this one he's going out of the frame i wouldn't select that this gentleman i probably got some better photos and this is why i recommend the film strip because you can scroll through and kind of look at it and see like okay which one do I like now in the event where you're like okay I need to see uh, multiple images at once hold shift and you can click on the compare mode and this is going to give you all three images at once and then if you hit the little lock and pan now you can click on an image zoom in and it's going to zoom relative to that spot on all three of the images this gives you an opportunity to really look and see which one you like and I personally like this one because he's actually looking at the camera so I'm going or looking in the direction of the camera I'm gonna go with that hit the letter P and it's gonna select that particular image now this works great when you're in a series of uh, photos that are all very similar and you know you zoom in you take a look you see which one you like I prefer this one again so I'm gonna hit P and now I'm moving in batches of three for photos that are similar now this one I actually like this one as well so I'm gonna hit P and you just repeat this process all all throughout your series of images. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the end of the culling process, but there are two ways that you can cull. You can cull using the multiple images, and I wouldn't select more than four, and I would only select four if they're vertical orientation. This is something you'll have to figure out what works best for your workflow, or you can go into the film strip and look at one photo at a time if you need to see it a little bit larger. But both methods are perfectly fine. The only thing that I highly recommend when it comes to culling is selecting your images that you want to edit or deliver but do not select images or focus on uh, I, I don't do the culling out process I like to call in so that way I'm taking my 236 images and reducing those to maybe about 80 images uh, that I'm ultimately going to edit and maybe deliver 30 we'll see so we'll come back once I am done with the culling you can see I have made 
selections over all of the images and some of them are very similar and that's okay because this is just my first pass. What I did fail to mention in the first segment of this video is when you're culling your images, you should always make sure that you are including your contractual photos. Now, this particular event, I wasn't under a contract, so I didn't have any particular photo that I needed to deliver. But some events will tell you, I need you to capture an image from the left side of this rider uh, coming out of the turn. And if that's the case, then make sure you do that because that's what you're getting paid to do. And you only get so many chances to capture that particular photo. Now, that's more in the event uh, space and really for sports, but same thing with a wedding. If you're supposed to get photos of the bridesmaids and photos of the bride walking down the aisle, you don't want to miss those shots, but you also want to make sure that you're being creative. And, you know, so take that into consideration when you're calling, because if you don't deliver what's under contract, then you're opening yourself up for a world of problems. Uh, with all of that out of the way, though, you can see I've gone through and I've made my initial selects. This doesn't mean that all of these photos that I put hearts on are going to be delivered to the client. However, I want to see just the photos with the hearts on them. So I'm going to come down to my filter and click the heart. And you can see I went from 236 images down to 70. Now, this is really like 140 images uh, because remember, the JPEG is still included with this. So you just times this number by two. But you can see this is a lot more manageable to go through and start editing. Now, I do have some friends that like to apply a preset before they go through the culling process just so they can see what the final result is going to look like and then they're culling that way. Uh, I personally like to cull through my images before I put the preset on and then I apply the preset because to me that's part of the editing process. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just what works for you. Now, what I will say is there are some photos like these three right here. Let me just pull these up real quick. These three are very similar. The one that I think think is going to be the hero shot for delivery is right here. It's this photo on the far right side. And that's just because he fills the frame more. You can tell that the photo is more focused on him. Not that these photos aren't, but there's just so much distraction going on in the background here. He's blocking this, this particular sign here and here doesn't exist on this one. It's like blown out really, really bad right here, uh, or I guess really good. So it's not a distraction in the overall image. Uh, whereas in this image, in this image, you could see that there's all those road signs. You could remove them. Um, and I may, de depending on how much I want to edit this photo, I could remove this uh, power column or electric column. There's a lot of stuff that I could do, but overall, I picked this one because he was more in focus here. And I like seeing this rider, the separation between the rider in the front and the rider in the back. Now, I'm no super genius when it comes to sports photography or anything like that. Uh, I have a few events under my belt, but not enough to uh, to be a super mentor on it. But personal preference, uh, the beauty of it is the event owner, unless he watches this video, uh, does not know that I captured 400 plus images. All he knows is that I'm going to deliver some images. I may only give him 10 and that could be it. So as long as you are, you know, I, I guess the idea of overshooting versus undershooting, um, I err on the side of let me photograph more let me take more images than I probably need to because I'm likely going to run into a scenario where I'm going to need to deliver more photos than what I can get through with the calling so if you don't give yourself more opportunities if you become too confident in your ability to photograph you may end up backing yourself into some corners that are really hard to get out of just because you didn't feel like pressing the shutter button uh, don't don't be a snob and don't you know don't spray and pray where you're just holding down the shutter but overall I think that it makes sense to photograph things the way that they are capture the event capture the moment and it's okay if there's duplicates because you can get rid of them in the calling process this took me about 15 minutes to get through those 200 images and I don't think that that's a large time to get this down to 70 photos that I can now go in and really Really start editing because my next step is going to be uh, adding a preset but that's in the next video so hopefully you found value in this particular video if you got questions about calling uh, let me know in the
in the comment section below. But also, if you have experience with culling large batches of files, then please share it in the comment section below because I don't claim to know everything about uh, the photography space. And this is how we all learn together. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating.